It's pretty obvious that gut health has been a trending topic of interest for quite some time now. Now your gut and your skin, guess what? They are chatting back and forth on a regular basis. So when there are problems going on in the gut, such as bacterial overgrowth, otherwise known as gut dysbiosis, you can have skin findings. Weight loss surgery is of course nothing new, but back in the 70s, the procedure was maybe not quite as sophisticated as the procedures that are available today. And a lot of those patients emerged with the skin rash coupled with fever and arthritis. And that became known as bowel associated dermatosis arthritis syndrome. You guessed it, the shorthand of that is badass. Now today, this condition is still observed, but it can be seen in different gut disorders aside from weight loss surgery. The surgeries have gotten better, but we still have a lot of other reasons to have bacterial overgrowth in our intestines, gut dysbiosis, and the skin problem. We're gonna cover the skin findings, but who gets this? Well, patients who have inflammatory bowel disease would represent a good chunk of those who go on to develop this. Inflammatory bowel disease, as a reminder, is sort of an umbrella for two main conditions, ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. As a side note, recently I did a deep dive on all of the possible skin findings associated with those bad boys. So definitely check that out after you watch this one if you are someone who struggles with either of those diseases. Some patients have what's known as small intestinal bacterial overgrowth or SIBO where you have a problem with the little valve between certain segments of the small intestine that results in retrograde meaning backward flux of bacteria and overgrowth of bacteria in parts of the small intestine and a whole host of symptoms. Those patients can develop the skin problem known as badass. It's also been observed in patients who have appendicitis, diverticulitis, and peptic ulcer disease. For whatever reason, in these different types of conditions, there might be some underlying anatomical change in the gastrointestinal tract that allows for pockets of bacteria to kind of get out of whack, proliferate, and you can get bacterial overgrowth. Like I said, with small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, or SIBO, you have a problem with the valve in part of the small intestine, which allows for bacteria to take over retrograde. Patients who have inflammatory bowel disease like Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis, you know, they've got a lot going on in their digestive tract, a lot of inflammation. They can form what are known as fistulas, which are a connection, like a tube-like connection, connecting two body spaces, organs that should not be connected. They also can develop what's known as adhesions. And the fistulas and the adhesions, they can be little nidises of abnormal bacterial overgrowth. At least in the case of inflammatory bowel diseases like ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease, there is a baseline increase in intestinal permeability. Now, some people might label this as leaky gut. The details of that, I think, get blown out of proportion. But yes, there is some baseline per increase in permeability of the intestines in patients with inflammatory bowel disease. The underlying root problem here is that you have gut dysbiosis, you have a problem with bacterial overgrowth, and some of that bacteria makes its way outside of the lumen, the little inside of your intestine, into the bloodstream. The bacteria, along with different bacterial toxins, stuff that the bacteria make. Once it gets into the bloodstream, your immune system is like, um, no thank you. And your immune system, you know, it keeps you healthy in a variety of ways. And one way it attacks stuff is through the formation of immunoglobulins, which think of them as like a little arrow, okay? You've got a bow and arrow, if you're the immune system, and you see you see like a bacteria floating around and you shoot the arrow, it pierces the bacteria or sticks on the bacteria. Well, now you've got bacteria gunk plus immunoglobulin that's called an immune complex. And those circulate around and guess what? They get stuck in your skin, they get stuck in your joints and are what are responsible for the symptoms of bowel-associated dermatosis arthritis syndrome. It is an immune complex deposition disorder. Once those immune complexes deposit, get stuck in like your skin and joints, that leads to another inflammatory response where a bunch of cells called neutrophils come in. Whenever there are a lot of neutrophils, you have the opportunity to see, well, pus. So now that you have some understanding of the behind the scenes of this, what does it look like? Bell associated dermatosis arthritis syndrome is a relapsing condition, meaning you can have a flare up of it and it can go away and stay away for a while and it might come back again at a later time. It consists of having fever, an arthritis, which typically affects like the knee, the 
elbow, might affect some of the joints in the hand and also the ankle. You'll experience muscle aches, just generally feeling like you have a flu-like illness, chills, maybe you have night sweats. You've got all that inflammation revved up in your body. And of course, germane to this video and this channel, skin findings that can fool you at first glance, especially when they are in the early stages of developing. The rash of bowel associated dermatosis arthritis syndrome usually starts on the trunk, maybe like the shoulders, the upper extremities, and it tends to spread out as it progresses, it tends to encompass larger body surfaces. It starts out as this little red bump that might look like a bug bite or a little hive, and these little bumps, they might get larger and they often develop a little pus bump in the center. That's known as a pustule. Might look like a blister, but it's got pus. These are sterile pustules, meaning there's no active bacterial infection going on there. It's related rather to the deposition of immune complexes in the skin and the subsequent influx of neutrophils into that area, which leads to the formation of pus. These little pus bumps can extend and involve larger areas. They can be larger lesions. You might even develop ulcers in some cases. In some cases, you might even have a rash on the palms that consists of what looks like little blood blisters. You might even have these spots on the soles of your feet as well. In the setting of a flare up, you might also develop little sores inside the mouth, commonly referred to as canker sores, otherwise known as aphthous ulcers. As a side note, I have a video all about canker sores. If you ever had one, they are miserable, they're pretty common. Check that video out because I give a lot of tips and tricks on how to remedy them, how to prevent them from coming back. But if you were in a flare up of bowel associated dermatosis arthritis, it would not be unusual for you to have sores inside the mouth and you might even have little pus bumps and ulcers and, and painful spots on the lips as well. The other skin finding that can show up along with this or might be confused with this is erythema nodosum. This is a skin condition where you get these painful, tender nodules, most often on the lower legs like the shins, but honestly can happen anywhere. Erythema nodosum is an inflammation in the subcutaneous fatty compartments of the skin. It's known as a paniculitis, and it can be seen with a variety of background medical issues and medication. So if you have this, it doesn't mean that you are developing bowel associated dermatosis arthritis. And in some cases, those little pus bumps, they might develop into a full fledged ulcer known as pyoderma gangrenosum, which is an expanding ulcer that has these very expansive borders and can go quite deep. Again, can happen on the lower legs, but really anywhere on the body. All right, hopefully I have not freaked you out too much at this point in the video, especially if you do have inflammatory bowel disease or SIBO and you're thinking, oh my gosh, am I gonna develop this? Take a deep breath because this is very rare. I think I have seen maybe two cases of it in my lifetime. It's not out of the realm of possibilities, but it can happen, but it's definitely one way in which your skin and your gut can be in cahoots when something is going awry. While it is rare, it is more often seen in people who have inflammatory bowel disease, especially ulcerative colitis. It seems to be more common these days in women in their 40s. Not as common anymore in people who have had weight loss surgery, likely due to advancements in surgical technique around weight loss surgery. What do you do once this develops? How is it handled? Well, sometimes it just spontaneously resolves on its own in the matter of a couple of days with no treatment. Yeah, leaving it alone and ignoring it might actually be a potential treatment. Of course, there are more severe, more extensive cases that are gonna warrant more aggressive medical therapies. If you have inflammatory bowel disease, whether it be ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease, treating the bowel disease is of paramount importance. And medications that target specific aspects of the abnormal normal immune response in those diseases are needed. But when a dermatologist is called upon to manage these skin symptoms, findings, skin lesions, how do we get them to go away above and beyond controlling underlying medical problems? Well, a 
again, there is a problem with an abnormal overgrowth of certain bacteria in the digestive tract. So what do you think we're gonna do to try and tackle that? Well, we're gonna prescribe antibiotics, specifically tetracyclines and an antibiotic known as metronidazole. Antibiotics will help reduce the burden of that problematic bacteria, and they also have some anti-inflammatory properties about them that make them particularly useful in treating inflammatory conditions as well. Also, due to the extent of inflammation, causing the joint pain, all the other symptoms, a course of an oral steroid or an IV steroid may be necessary, like prednisone, for example, just to get that inflammation to die down from those immune complexes. Speaking of immune complexes, remember when they deposit, they incite an influx of neutrophils, and that is a big problem with the little pus bump formation, as well as just the overall kind of potentially destructive local nature of the skin lesions as they start to possibly expand. So a medication that can work actually really well for anything that involves an influx of those neutrophils is called Dapsone. We use Dapsone to treat many skin conditions in dermatology because of this anti-neutrophil effect that it has. In some cases, your dermatologist might lean into injecting steroid medicine directly into some of these skin spots, and that might be helpful. However, topical steroids, while a dermatologic go-to for many conditions, are not particularly helpful here. Even though this condition is very unsettling and very uncomfortable to go through, there is light at the end of the tunnel. Like I said, it's rare, okay? So no need to panic. This video is meant for educational purposes, not to scare you to bits. Now, what could you do aside from medications? Is there any sort of supplement that you might take? Well, that is an area of active and ongoing research for which there really isn't good evidence that supplements will help this condition. There is one supplement that maybe your gastroenterologist might recommend to you that has been shown to reduce intestinal permeability in people who have inflammatory bowel disease, and that is glutamate. Is there any type of diet that could be particularly useful in this situation? We don't have good evidence of any one diet being superior, especially given how rare this condition is in the first place. Though some patients with inflammatory bowel disease, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth do benefit from a trial, a period of time at least, of what is known as a low FODMAP diet. This is a very specific diet that you should discuss with your gastroenterologist on how to properly execute, but that might be something that also provides you with some symptomatic relief as well. All right, guys, so that's what I wanted to talk about in today's video. People throw around the term gut health, gut dysbiosis, gut bacteria, but this is a real life problem that affects people while it's not common. As you can see, it can be very debilitating and as you can imagine, very distressing to go through. There is a true underlying root cause mechanism, immune complex deposition in the skin and the joints, an immune complex disorder, and there are established treatments that can help clear this up and it responds well in most cases to medication. All right, y'all, on the end slate, I'm gonna put my recent video all about the skin signs of inflammatory bowel diseases like ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. You're definitely gonna to wanna to watch that one next. Also consider watching my video on erythema nodosum, those painful nodules that can be warning signs of a variety of different health problems such as inflammatory bowel disease. Um, I'll link that one as well down below in the description box. But if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.